Hello again, welcome back. And today, all I got for you is we're gonna get, show you the 289 running. So I've already had it running because I would, it's not really entertaining to show somebody the, uh, the crap show that's involved in getting everything set up, putting coolant in it, putting oil, checking the oil pressure, priming the oil pump and things like that. Getting the carb set up and the fuel system and all the wires and hoses. So uh, we're just showing you the, giving you the highlights, giving you the scoop and uh, showing you what we got. So if you haven't followed on any of the other uh, videos that I had going in the past, this is a old school 65 289. I'm building for a, a guy. He's building it or he's putting this into a GT40 uh, replica, trying to do it pretty true to form, trying to stay uh, original as possible without you know going too uh, too modern with anything. So it has a lot of concessions for originality instead of uh, you know something more modern. So no fuel injection. You know, they wants to have date coated heads and block and things like that to the max extent possible. So, uh, yeah, we'll go over it. So, 65 289, uh, 289 early heads. They have the, the push rod guides plates kind of built in to the heads. We have extensive porting on the heads, larger valves, 351 size valves in the heads, uh, machine for screw in studs and uh, roll rockers. Reverse the valve train. It's still 289 crank. There's Eagle rods in it and hypertechnic pistons because he, you know, GT40 replica. You're gonna can have a couple rips with, out with it. You know, you don't want anything to, to fall, or, or fall apart with the original style connecting rods or anything. Uh, that oil pan is temporary because it's gonna have to get another one to fit in the, the GT40 chassis. So it does have. Uh, Concessions for something modern is a hydraulic roller cam by Flotec induction and only because I can't trust flat tap at camshafts and oil anymore Especially when you start getting anything aggressive with some valve train So the valve train isn't super aggressive not a ton of lift because you know you've got stock heads You're not gonna get anything crazy out of it. Just streetable Nice performance right in the, the fat of the, the rev range As much as you get out of the curve without revving the sack off of it just to make it live and and be you know behave you know we don't want it, anything too radical that's going to cause uh, a lot of issues we just want it to run good so we have a lot of things like uh, scott drake timing covers you know to, to match the 65 uh, style water pumps with the different uh doesn't have backing plates it's got a, a cast impeller with like it's pretty much like a high flow water pump for the original 289s but uh you know, it's all set up. They had the date coated water pump, which is, I don't know where I put it. Oh, there it is, off in the corner for the moment. Yeah, he bought it. They said it was rebuilt. I had it on here, and because it's the run stand, that's what we're checking for leaks and things. And that sucker leaked all over the place as soon as I fired it up. So I had it running for about two minutes before I shut it down. And I just couldn't go any further. It was spraying coolant all over the place. As you can see, like the the dark tins over here on the floor, how wet it got. So I was so disgruntled with it, I just set a bucket underneath, and I think I got it running on Wednesday. I didn't come back in the garage till Friday. Yeah, two days later, I was just so pissed off with it. So that I had a new style water pump for it, and I took up a couple hours yesterday evening swapping it out, so everything dried up overnight added water to it and uh, we were ready and we got it running early this morning so just so you can tell the big high post style reproduction balancer single pulleys you know you got the big uh, pulley for the alternator have all the charging system working and the, the bracketry these are just five liter uh, EFI Mustang shorty headers just run to a simple exhaust it's the exhaust is not aggressive on this because I want to hear the engine. I don't care how rumbly the exhaust sounds. I want to hear if there's clicking or clacking or squeaking or any kind of noises coming from the engine that's, you know, that shouldn't be there. I don't want to be trying to diagnose things over the sound of like open headers. You see a lot of guys, they'll, they'll fire up the, these engines on stands and they're, rah, 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 they're blasting it and like, well, what's good set doing? You can't hear anything. So. But that aside, we just it's a temporary intake manifold. 
I had a different Holly carburetor. There's the other one that's on the bench over there on here. And that one, all it did was it surged, it surged, it surged, and I could figure it out. So luckily I had this one that a customer brought when he dropped off the, all the 390 parts, you know, the bins of parts. So I just snagged it quick and threw it on here. And it's great. So uh, happy to have this to get it going. Because I thought I was you know, trying to tune something that just didn't want to be tuned right now. And you don't want to be dorking around with a carburetor when you're trying to break in a motor. So uh rebuilt original style distributor i just it should be a, a dual point if it's a real hypo but you try to find one for sane money so right now it's just you know vacuum advance is just not operable it's just it's in there being fixed and uh that's good to go we had a problem when i first tried starting it up with it misfiring and i'm a little disappointed in somewhere along the line we got the camshaft custom made, or custom ordered, and uh, I specifically said 289 firing order, early 302. And I go to crank this thing over, hit start, and it's backfiring out of the carburetor. So I don't know, maybe I gotta check the power valve, but I think maybe it's blown out. But uh, it just, I tried it twice, got backfires, and I, I just stopped. I'm like, I'm usually good enough that I can get these things to light off, you know, within a few turns, a few revolutions of the crank for the first time. And I know what I'm doing and it wasn't lighting off. So I checked the documentation for the camshaft. It doesn't say anything about the firing order. So, and all I did was I swapped plug wires around to give it the modern HO style firing order and it fired right up. So... Even though I, I said 289 firing orders, either somebody, the vendor omitted that, comp cam, the grinder omitted it, somewhere along the line that information got dropped and it got ground as standard 5 liter HO style camshaft. So as I, well, unfortunately, I mean that's 99.9% .9 of their business. Maybe they just didn't see, somebody didn't see or check, but that's what I ended up getting. So these nice... Uh, numbered you know plug wires aren't gonna really work because they're all jumbled up now and this one had to stretch across for number four and <sighs> gonna have to get different plug wires set just to make it nice again because I'm not gonna swap plug wires and have numbers being weird and, and if you want something nice you got to do it right but unfortunately you know we're gonna have to change it get some different set of plug wires to make it work so yeah so other than that things are going i had um, i don't know what the heck happened back here with the paint so i got a little blister and i touched it after it was run for a while and i'll have to touch that up or something i don't think anything's wrong there's no there's nothing leaking with the core plug so i'll have to see but we're going good the alternator's charging and uh see what we got i got the hoses kind of run out the garage so i don't 68 myself but they are starting to melt a little bit i didn't think they'd last long but it was that was free so i'm not too worried about it and all right well let's get to the meat and potatoes of it let's see how this goes with me doing it one-handed because I, I can't find my tripod got a little knocker style fuel pump there mission on a little squirt Button. Well, I think it's the solenoid is bad. Great oil pressure. 
resistor. So this coil is pulling a little too hot for a standard set of a, a Petronas igniter. because I, this, this intake is only temporary so I put the cork gaskets in the end so I don't know if it's leaking from the cork or the distributor rippy so very responsive on the even with a little carb like a 600 uh, vacuum secondary so I mean there is no like torque converter or heavy clutch flywheel or anything like just a little flex plate so it is gonna be really snappy but I really wasn't giving it a whole lot and it was still pretty darn good so I think that when this thing gets all give it another hour or two uh, break in time before I take things down and get it off the stand I got to paint the pump, redetail things back up, fix some leaks, and it'll be all kind of ready to be picked up again. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.